Hey, good morning. This is Ben with Studio on the Lake. Here's uh, one of two. I had broke this down into two to keep within that 15-minute uh, goal that I'm trying to get. Here's an old man made out of that cottonwood that came uh, came from Jordy. So here's a chunk of that cottonwood. Uh, I noticed Jordy got a whole bunch more of it, and uh, now I'm not afraid to dig into it and mess around with it because you've seen a couple things. I still got quite a few few chunks and uh, uh, Jordy has promised to send some more later down the road if I need some and I probably will at some point down the road. Uh, so here I am cleaning the back of it up. Uh, people have been asking what I'm running on the DeWalt. I'm running a 24 grit, a 36 grit sometimes and, and, and sometimes a 48. I try to stay down in, in that range because really I'm not uh, um, I, I'm not trying to get a smooth finish, although this leaf's not too bad a finish. So on the front there, take down uh, a, a rough face in the top. The concept for this guy, I, I picked a fat piece, you can see where my hand is down on the bottom, and uh, I thought it might be kind of fun to, to carve some a couple of fairies messing around in this old guy's beard, because in the, an imaginary world, where you've got uh, tree spirits and fairies and stuff there. They're goofy and they're gonna be messing around with the old guy. Here's a cuts all extreme. Same same stuff that uh, Jordy uses and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna rough in the eyes. You'll notice when I'm doing these pieces, I, I've said this a hundred times and you guys are probably tired of hearing it, but uh, I won't work on any one section for very long, I'll rough it, I'll block it, I'll uh, see what's developing, and then I'll go from there. That's the autistic in me, uh, and just the way I approach a carving. So uh, approach it any way you want. I've seen people completely finish one particular section of a carving before they move on, or I've watched painters. I, I like to dabble a little bit in painting, and uh, they'll completely paint out one portion of it and then go on to the rest of the painting. I can't do that. I, I have to work in, uh, the whole thing a little bit and then move on. So cutting the forehead back, defining the cheeks in. Sometimes I like to leave bulbous cheeks on there. My, my wife tells me that doesn't look realistic and she's right if you look at faces and study faces on how to do that. I keep promising one day to do a actual dimension on a face carving and I haven't done it. This is uh, one of two videos that'll, that'll go up today and if I get crazy I, I think I'll go out and carve as opposed to finish the editing on the other two halves. There's a, a pumpkin spice girl going and uh, as I got ready to do this voiceover, I, I watched uh, Jordy and his Pumpkin Hill thing on there, and uh, hey man, don't don't throw that guy away. I was watching you do him, and I thought, well, that's pretty awesome. He's got uh, what I call movement in him. Uh, initially, you had a pumpkin on a stump, and, and, and I love everything you do. So uh, where you go with it is, is just your artistic uh, bent on it and uh, this guy was like man look at that he's got he's canted to the left he's got the vines going down around you said you made a mistake I've done that oftentimes and, and like the mistake better than what I originally planned so uh, yeah man finish that guy and and, and uh, someone will buy him and throw it out there if they don't buy it then uh, give it away uh, most of you guys that are beginning carvers, now, hey, check this crack out. I was worried about it. It only went about halfway through. So I, I threw some super glue underneath it because I still wanted to keep that fat portion on there. Uh, he is in danger someday, perhaps, of, of just the whole front of him breaking off, but I, I doubt it because uh, this isn't going to be out. So I'm kind of sitting in here and I'm working in a weird spot as you'll notice so right here is the first point that I thought that I would put a fairy in and I kind of wanted a side silhouette of her hair flowing to the back I wasn't sure if I could get the face in relief enough and and and, and not convinced that I really needed to uh, because I'm suggesting that a fairy is in there 
and I kind of wanted her left hand because it'd be her left side fading back into the beard I wanted her hand to come up and, and be over or holding on to the uh, to his beard so that's one of two fairies that I plan on carving in here and you'll see that as it goes on I kind of develop her down a little bit more but uh, I'm blocking her out before I take and uh, start messing around with the beard <coughs> got so many videos I owe you. I really want to uh, do one and, and show the process. And a lot of people have asked for it. And to do that I, I need to get the other camera out. I, I film with a 70D, a Canon 70D. I, I film with a macro lens and I film from about probably four or five feet away. And uh, I'll show you that someday. But uh, this has got most of me in the frame and my mug sitting in the right hand corner there and then I, I zoom this down and uh, recenter sometimes and uh, that's how I get it. And the camera shoots with a fine enough detail. I haven't had any luck with the GoPros. I got a couple of GoPros and I, I just don't like the quality on those although lots of people end up with some excellent quality. So I blocked her out with a taper tip and then I went to a, a diamond ball which allows me to go uh, and, and do a little more sculpting like you're taking your finger and pushing down into clay a, a note on on selling carvings you can't sell them for what you've got into them if you're working a job and you're making 20 bucks an hour uh, 25 bucks an hour you, you sit down and you look at this and you think, man, I've got, how much time do I have in this? Well, I probably have about four hours of carving in this guy. I have another hour, give or take, in the finishing when I'm putting the finish on there and rubbing them down. So let's just say for sake, that I, I've got uh, five hours in this guy. So uh, at, at 25 bucks an hour, uh, he'd be a hundred and a quarter. That's not unreasonable uh, in my book, but you have to ask yourself, you know, would I go out and pay $125 for this? Um, and the answer uh, may be yes in some cases and, and no in others. There's no rhyme or reason in the art world on why some things catch on and, and some things don't. I mean, it totally miffs the hell out of me. Uh, I'll look at something that someone who's doing a, a lot of selling and I personally don't like anything that they're doing and I, I wouldn't pay any amount of money, even $20. But uh, when you add the shipping in there and the rest of that, I, I certainly, you know, another 15 bucks for shipping. So here's the, but anyway, uh, once you get a following, people start wanting uh, your things and, and that's kind of a double-edged sword. You don't, you don't get to carve a lot of times what you want to carve. Uh, a lot of you are carvers out there that are following this. You, you know if you've carved. 20 of the same damn thing over and over again after a while you, you get kind of bored of it and you think man why did I why did I sign on to this there's a second fairy going in and her uh, all you're gonna get is uh, uh, the butt and legs and I'll, I'm gonna show you in the second video how I put some uh, 10 wings on there but uh, she's kind of dove deep in the bottom part of that uh, beard there and there you can kind of see what's going on I do tone that down quite a bit just to, to make it a little bit tamer uh, otherwise you got this big butt sticking out in the middle of a beard and we don't want that you'll see towards the end of this when this guy comes out I, I, I'm really liking this guy I like what's going on with him I'm, I'm back to the taper bit cutting in his uh, his beard and his mouth and, and starting to lay out some flow lines on the mustache and the beard and whatnot. His eyes uh, uh, tried something a little bit different here. I, I left the lid heavy down, so he's kind of got his eyes almost closed. And if I were to put an eyeball in there, it would be really under that part that looks like an eyeball right now. So his lids would be down and, and he would be going uh, 
either oh my god they're at it again or oh i kind of like that so you make up your mind as bob ross used to say it's your world and uh, wherever your imagination takes you the whole concept of this is uh, this is fun to carve for me it's relaxing it's what i do i go out into the studio i put on uh, something with Netflix because my TV's too old to pull up Hulu or something like that and uh, I, I sit there in car for three or four hours in the morning in a lot of cases uh, especially in the winter it's too cold I don't have to work outside so I don't I go out and I build a fire and I sit there and, and do what I'm doing so the challenge for this guy here is to make the, the hair flow down in and you can kind of see I've got got it going to some degree there and you see there's the sun was actually peeking in I, I do block those windows when I film because that just wrecks holy hell I've got a couple of uh, big lights that I I have setting up above and off to the side they're, they're actually studio lights for uh, photography and uh, they do a nice job I try to light everything so I don't have too many shadows so I went back uh, and and kind of thin down his face on the sides trying not to cut too much in it's it's really easy to go overkill and here's part of what I was talking about don't worry I don't work on any one piece a whole lot and then I'll come back so now I've got I'm trying to cut an under lid in that eye and this is a, a ruby bit which is my second go-to. That's kind of the sanding bit. They come in a couple different grits, and uh, I, I tend to buy the coarser grit, there are a medium grit, and as they wear down, I, I treat them accordingly. I end up with a fine bit when I'm all done, and at some point, they lose everything and start uh, burning. At that point, they get retired or turned into a bit that cuts holes and that sort of thing punches a hole in there if I want to or I don't care if it burns or not so since I'm, I'm trying to keep these guys down to about 15 minutes uh, you're gonna see uh, kind of what's going on here in it but you won't see the you won't see the complete finish of this guy and like I said I I'm really happy with the way he turned out and he's sitting here beside my chair and uh, I put a finish on those those wings and painted them and I don't like that so I'm gonna end up taking that off before I film the or film the final and I, it's all filmed I just need to do uh, the end portion of it so refining down a little bit more it was hard to decide what to do with the hair above his forehead there and uh, eventually I'm gonna fade that back a little bit more but he'll be kind of kind of wild in there. If you uh, this guy is going to go up on the Etsy channel, I'm terrible about putting things on there. I've got a bunch of stuff that I need to I need to get uh, shots of, and to do that I've got to set up a photography spot in the corner and get the lighting and, and put them in. Right now there's a couple things in there hopefully by the end of today but if you want to check that out it's just my name Ben at studio on the lake for Etsy and you can look at those and I, I'm trying just to pick a price and shipping to the United States uh, would be free nothing annoys the hell out of me more than someone saying oh man I look at something and go good that's a good price 15 bucks and then I look at it and they want $25 for shipping and handling I, I sort of get that but I don't get that. I pick the price. It's like a car. Put the damn price on the on the window and let's not bicker about it. I'll decide and I won't feel like I've been screwed when I uh, drive off the lot. So now I'm, I'm, I'm starting to put some deep cuts in there and you'll see at the end of this thing or when this thing is finished in video two, I got some pretty deep cuts and uh, I do the same thing Jordy does. I'll put a cut in there, then I'll cross those hairs over and uh, try not to stay in a straight line. Uh, newer carvers will tend to carve things uh, straight, straightforward. 
And that's one of the reasons I, I like that Pumpkin Hill dude that you're doing, man. Uh, he's not straight. He's canted off to the side. He's got what uh, uh, artistic folks call movement in him. And uh, stick with that. Uh, if you're a beginning carver, you, you'll be lacking a lot of times that movement. I've said it before. There's a, a bird carver uh, that I follow. And he said, I have the technical ability to do anything I want to do. I can car If I can see it, I can carve it. The, my challenge now is, is putting some movement and some life into this thing and making it do what it's there. So there's the end of part one, and you'll see part two, and I'll, I'll be putting more detail in there, and I'll show you what I do with those wings and the fairy wings. So, hey, thanks a lot for watching. This has been Ben with Studio on the Lake.